We have Iowa Retro Gamer Dad here. Uh, Zach's got a retro-based channel collecting. Does uh, you know everything from game reviews to unboxings. So Zach, uh, how long ago did you start this channel up, man? Uh, I'd say it's it's been about a year and a half now. Um, I think I I want to say it was almost May. Well, maybe it was May or March. Okay, it was one of those months of last year I kind of started it. Okay, so very recently. And yeah, what, what, were not... the, what were some of the channels that inspired you to start it? Well, originally it was uh, kind of like a lot of people talk about was uh, Metal Jesus Rocks. Um, and, of course, you know, ABGN. I, I've been a fan of him for a while. A lot of people were recommending, uh, you know, I was – we we're talking about games and stuff. And I said, "Well, have you ever seen him?" And they said, "Well, no." And I was, I was like, "Well, no." They're like, "Well, you definitely need to watch the Ninja Turtles video right. about when he plays the first time he plays Ninja Turtles." And I, I just, you know, obviously I fell in love with James ever since that. I've been watching all his videos, and I mean, there's a cup. James and Mike Mondays has been kind of one of my big staples for YouTube. Is I watch that about every week on Monday. Um, and I mean, yeah, Metal Jesus Rocks, you know, he, it started that. And, uh, yeah, it was really cool. His channel was just really informative. It was really put together. And, you know, the whole crew was pretty fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, and then and another big one was uh, I discovered uh, Pixel Game Squad. I discovered them on Amazon one time when I was at work bored. So then, yeah, I kind of saw that, saw them on Amazon, then found out they actually had a YouTube channel, and I, which I thought was awesome. So then I started watching all the YouTube stuff, and yeah, I really like big fan of Pixel, big uh, big fan of Pixel Game Squad. Then otherwise, nice, it's just yeah. kind of been jumping around I'm, to I'm, different retro channels. <laughs> I'm familiar with all the ones you mentioned there, the yeah. classics. And, and I'll give you a very metal Jesus, huh? He likes to say, huh? Huh? <laughs> I don't know why. That's just one of his things. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does those pickup videos with Reggie, and yep. they have some pretty extreme – I mean, they'll, he'll just, like, bust out. He's like, this is the 50 games I got for this pickup and, and like, 12 vinyl yeah. records, and, you know. <laughs> oh, and it is, it is PC Big Clock, Big Box collection is crazy. And, like, I think he did a little tour video before he moved into his new house, and he was just kind of showing off, and he opens up that closet – and totes and totes and it's stacked up you know and he's a tall guy and it's stacked up above him in his freaking closet it's like man that's crazy i know he's Absolutely. a big he loves his big box pc games and his new his new uh house his new game room is is, is real dope big upgrade yeah yeah he's freaking crazy man good for him Definitely, I'm kind of jealous of uh, <laughs> that Seattle. That I'm not jealous of the rain because I get enough yeah. rain here in Florida, but I'm jealous of that Seattle collecting scene they have there because uh, yes, it's pretty nice. Yep, yep. I got. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, ever watched Pac-Man Case. He recently got about 1,000 subs, but he lives up in that area, and you know, and I asked him about it and how it is up there. He said, "Yeah, it's crazy. The retro scene up there is just absolutely crazy." Uh, he's actually met, I think, Riggs and them, too. And it's, yeah, it's... Here in Iowa, we don't have too much of that. It's, well, maybe... Well, I guess you got in Des Moines, probably, and around that with uh, uh, gaming off the grid and stuff. But here in my little neck of the woods, kind of out here in the boondocks. Did your collecting, like, coincide with starting the channel, or were you collecting far before you had the channel? Well, I started collecting, um, just get off kind of the start. Uh, I have a very addictive personality. Um, I've actually been about seven years sober now in September. So I kind of, I latch on to something and I kind of come become obsessed with it. So it was kind of for the longest time after I sobered up, it was working out and I was working out, you know, six, seven times a week. And then, um, I had a coworker who had a relative pass away and he uh, inherited a storage unit. So he goes to the storage unit and this guy had two of about everything 
all from uh, Nintendo all the way up to I think it was PS2. He had like he had one box. He had a Nintendo 64 sealed box. I mean, he just had totes and totes of games and stuff. So this guy is showing me all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, you know what? I, I think I still have my Nintendo and stuff at my mom's. I'm going to go check it out, you know. And I, Because I had always played pretty modern gaming at the time, you know, on Xbox One, X, Xbox 360. And, you know, maybe I'd occasionally get the collection uh, games and play some older games on that. But I was really not going for the original hardware. So then I was... You know, went to my mom's and I kind of dug through the closet and, you know, I, I ended up pulling out my original NES and Sega Genesis stuff way, way in the back. Um, and I the NES actually ended up having, uh, it looked like, it looked like beer was still uh, dried up and nasty in it. And it had a couple bugs that died inside of it. So I, I ended up pulling that thing out. Um, didn't have any games. So then I was kind of looking around on, you know, good old eBay and stuff. And I bought a couple of games for it and I was cool. And I got a zapper and my kids loved that. And then, then it just kind of started off. Well, I started, that was when I was really getting more into the YouTube stuff, watching stuff. So I actually collected for about a good year or so before I even um, got on the YouTube, but it just kind of started off, um, started off just kind of getting whatever I could find at Goodwill and then I'd get bored uh, and just kind of search for, like, video game lots and stuff on eBay. Because, like I said, around here, there's not really much to, to get. Um, and so it just kind of started like that. And then, uh, like I said, with the obsessiveness and the addictive personality, I just kind of it just started blowing up. I would just, every, you know, waking moment, it'd be like I'd wake up in the morning, you know, go downstairs, have my coffee, open up eBay, open up Macari, just kind of look. And, you know, if I saw something I like, I'd get it. And then before I knew it, man, I was just, it was stuff in here that I didn't even know why I had it. And then I got a, I actually got a new job working at an ethanol plant here in Iowa, and it's got a 12-hour swing shift. So basically, you know, for two weeks, I work 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then after that two weeks, I get the weekend off, and then I swap back over, and then I work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So then I'm on nights. So then on my days off, I was like, well, what am I going to do? You know, my night's off. Um, my kids and everybody will be upstairs sleeping, and I'll just be sitting down here. So then I just, I had a SNES Classic. I started playing Super Mario RPG, and then I was still watching all these guys on YouTube, and I was like, man, these are pretty cool, you know, and I was seeing all this stuff, you know, and every, you know, the original reason I started the channel was, you know, obviously to, to try and become big like these guys, you know, so the people were you know, companies were wanting me to show off their cool stuff and I was getting free stuff and everything like that. And then so I started the channel and it started off way rough. I mean, if anybody ever goes back to look at one of my first videos, I am, I'm not even using widescreen. I'm just holding up my phone with one hand and in my other one, and I'm just pulling NES games out of a package and stuff like that. And then so it basically started like that. I, I needed something to do at night when I was on nights when I had the night off. So I I needed something to do down here besides, you know, just playing video games. And yeah, basically from there it started. I was uh, showing off my collection and I started meeting a bunch of people on Instagram. And then it went from trying to become YouTube famous to just having straight up fun and, you know, sharing my passion that I developed with uh, other people. Now, um, I've recently got Instagram going for not only our site, but, you know, my solo and, you know, Brady's got his, his Instagram going. Yep. What, what are some ways you really utilize that? Because I've actually found Twitter a little easier to, uh, promote like live streams and links specifically just because I have issues with Instagram, um, I don't know why they don't allow, like, on your own page. It seems like they don't want to let you hyperlink an active blue link. You know what I mean? It's like you post yeah, it. You, and you get one. Text. So I think right. uh, I think on your profile you get one link, and a lot of people use that. I think Link R or something like that, which takes you to a page that has multiple their multiple social media platforms on there. Um, so I I'm kind of I'm not. 
I shouldn't say too old fashioned because obviously we're talking about retro games, but I I not I don't know too much about Twitter. It's kind of one of the big things. I've never really dove into that platform. Um, I mean, it started off on Instagram. Uh, it seemed like it was easier for me to get followers, and I, I kind of find that sometimes with YouTube channels, is it seems like they have less followers but more subscribers. But it was kind of I used Instagram at first to kind of try and get my name out there, and then. Um, you know, sharing pictures of my pickups and trying to be, you know, putting in the description. If you'd like to see more, you know, please check out my channel, the links in my profile. But I, what I'm finding, I, I like Instagram just to see what everybody else gets. And, you know, obviously people posting funny video game memes and stuff like that. Kind of about the same reason I just like using Facebook nowadays. It's not really to, um, you know, see what everybody's kind of up to. It's just to look at funny pictures and stuff. But that's how Instagram kind of started for me was just kind of, I was kind of that annoying guy in the beginning where I was trying to get my channel out there and you'd get a message from me and be like, hey man, I really like your stuff here on Instagram. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you had the time, check out my YouTube channel. And then of course I, you can post your link into the the message there and it'll take them right there, you know. And I found out, you know, for the most part, that was not the best route. Uh, You'd get the occasional person that would respond back, and then the people that would try to do the sub for sub, and then once you'd sub, you'd all of a sudden later on you'd they'd drop off. But I don't know. I mean, the biggest thing that I enjoyed it with Instagram was that I, I I met a lot of my friends on there now. Um, and like uh, like I was talking earlier about Pac Man Case and some of the guys on there was, uh, and it was a way for me to kind of. Uh, message and actually talk to other people because you know it's, it's kind of hard to give out a, a personal phone number on stuff like this because you don't know I mean I trust most people on here but there's some people out there that you don't know about so it's kind of nice to talk to them for a while to get to know them then maybe exchange numbers you know but yeah but I mean I'm not too big on Twitter I, I just don't it might be just because I don't know enough about it and I have been thinking about branching off into it I recently you know kind of been messing around with Reddit and Reddit's kind of over my head, but it kind of did. Yeah, it's just my Instagram. I basically use that just for you know looking at pictures and talking with people. And Facebook, I have a Facebook page too, which I kind of just post. I'll post uh, links to my new videos when I put them out, and I have like 50 followers or something on there. And if I do any of my like hot my spicy videos or whatever i i tend to post a link on my actual personal page because then like a lot of my friends that aren't in the video games actually kind of like to watch those ones so basically what i use it for there was one, the one spicy there's one you're eating spicy noodles right yes yeah, so my wife jumped in on that one she it was actually her idea one night she goes to me she says uh because i got a two-pack of it because i've been seeing a lot of videos of him and they're, you know, really good videos and stuff like that. And I was like, well, this is kind of cool. Let's check it out, you know. And she, you know, it showed up. And I, a lot of times when I get stuff, I usually get two of them because uh, on my earlier uh, live videos and stuff like that, I had my buddy, um, Darn is, hey, I work with him and stuff. He came over and uh, would do stuff like that with uh, with me. And we'd play like Mortal Kombat 4 and stuff and just kind of hang out and do a chill stream and yeah, she hopped in on that one, and yeah, that was a pretty good video. She afterwards, she was so she you knows she was so embarrassed and sick. Like, I don't know, I don't know what you know. I didn't know what to do. I felt so awkward. I said, "You did great." I mean, all, I mean it, the video was just us eating spicy stuff. That's all you got. I mean, there's nothing really else. That it would have right. been different if we tried to. She's like, "I thought we were gonna play a video game." I said, "Well, at the time, I've been switching my game room around a lot and stuff like that because I, I had a." a dummy mistake and I was trying to put up a shelving and I ended up screwing into a, a wire, an electrical wire. So I blew out an outlet. So of course that was where my PC and stuff was. And so I ended up having to move a bunch of stuff around. So I was like, I don't have it set up to stream yet. So yeah, she had fun with that. I had fun doing that with her. She said, that's probably about the only video she might do though. Understandable. Um, <laughs> And, and and back to um the Instagram Twitter thing, I found that we have to have both because half the time when we're talking when we're contacting people they have one or the other, right? So you know, they'll either they'll either uh, have to reach out to them on Twitter 
or reach out to them on Instagram. Also, specifically because a lot of people don't have emails that you can get a hold of. Yep. And when you go to people's about section on their YouTube, some of them didn't put in their, you know, their email address there. So that's been like the, the easiest way for us to contact people. Yep. That's, and that's understandable too. That's been kind of, that's been kind of the same with me. I'll get to know somebody on YouTube, you know, and be like, Hey man, I just picked up a bunch of games. I got doubles. Do you need any of these? And then, you know, we'll get, we'll kind of talk back and forth. And then, you know, we might start, con well, it might start off with just commenting on each other's videos and kind of get kind of a, you know, friendship kind of started. Then it'll go to, you know, DMing and, and then from then on, I mean, it's just kind of, that's, it's an easier way for me to get a hold of people too. Um, I kind of wish, you know, that YouTube would develop some kind of messaging system. Um, I know they have a community tab if you get so many subs and stuff like that, but kind of wish that they would develop some kind of messaging system like that. But like you said, I mean, there's no real, I think I, te I tend to have always a kind of contact me down in the description of my videos, but a lot of people don't. Right. Now, when you, when you collect, you know, wh wh what places are you hitting? Are you hitting more like, more like, uh, you know, yard sales, garage sales, you're hitting eBay, uh, you hitting game stores. Where do you like to go? So, like I said earlier, I kind of live out in the boonies here in Northwest Iowa and the closest like GameStop we have in our area is about an hour and a half away. Um, we are fortunate. Um, about a half hour away, I do have a uh, actual retro game uh, themed store, Exile Gaming here, um, which is nice. I mean, the, the people that run that are really cool. I've gone in there a lot of times with a box of games, and she'll, and you know, they'll kind of hook me up. They'll give me a decent price, and then, like I remember the one time I still needed it, I traded in a bunch of stuff, and I bought a bunch of you know stuff from them, and I was five dollars short, so I had to pay in cash, you know. And she said, "I ah, don't worry about it." And she even threw in. I was looking for a N64 memory card at the time, and they even threw in a memory card for me. But otherwise, I mean, like I kind of mentioned earlier, a lot of my collecting is just scouring Mercari. Mercari. I don't really use eBay too much anymore, um, but Mercari has been a big thing for me. I mean, I I have stuff saved on there, so if something pops up that you know I recently searched, it'll notify me, so then I can look through there. And a lot of times when I, I give tips to people on using that, um, one of the big things to do is just kind of, even if something's way too expensive, like it and just keep an eye on it. And yeah, and otherwise I, I have a few thrift stores around here. Um, only problem is I tend to run into, you know, ob the obvious ones you go in there and they got about 30 copies of Madden and stuff like that where, I'm hoping one of these days, you know, to get lucky and hit up that, uh, get that NCAA 14 or whatever. But uh, otherwise, you know, I got goodwill. I got a couple thrift stores that I tend to pop into every once in a while. Um, but otherwise, I mean, most of my stuff that I've had is either getting it from coworkers, um, getting it from friends that have seen me posting on Facebook about stuff like this. I, I remember I had a coworker who, uh, he ended up giving, he goes, hey, I got some old uh, video game magazines. Would you be interested in them? I'm like, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, totally. And uh, he said, okay. And then one day he messaged me when I was working the weekend, and he goes, hey, I dropped that box of magazines off in your car. So I went up there and checked it out. Dude straight up left me about, I think it was 50 to 60 uh, Nintendo Powers complete. Still had, you know, the posters in there, all the cards and everything. And it was some of the really cool earlier ones, so that was really awesome. But buying wise, I mean, I yeah, I tend to just scour. I sometimes get lucky on Facebook, but not really. You know, people nowadays with the, the way eBay is and stuff like that, they tend to go by the eBay prices. So you'll see somebody with a bunch of N64 games or something, and you'll you know how much would you like for all of them? I said, well, on eBay, and then I just kind of. Sometimes just stop talking to them right there. <laughs> and don't, they're just like, well, it says they're selling. Some guy wants uh, 90 bucks for it or whatever. And then you look at it and, yeah, he wants 90, but he's not selling it. And But, yeah, that's kind of what I use a lot is Macari. When you go on, like, if you ever use eBay, do you, do you ever use Make an Offer? 
Uh, a lot of what I do um, is kind of – I have done that in the past, and a lot of times it sometimes works to my advantage. But a lot of what I do when I did use eBay, like I haven't really used it as much anymore, but I will search uh, – I'll just search video games or video games lot, and I'll put ending soonest and then auction. And then I'll just kind of see if there's any ones that are about ready to be ending that are actually, you know, pretty decent priced or anything like that. And a lot of times it's just, I think it, it becomes just for fun, just looking to see what everybody's selling and stuff like that. But uh, I did get, a, there was a YouTuber a while back, uh, Rennie Bean, uh, and he would, uh, what he would do was, he said that he would uh, search for video games or video games lot, and he would actually put, newly listed and try and get ahead of some of the people that would you know if they had post a lot not you know it might be some grandma might be somebody that didn't know anything about video games and they just you know he might just get lucky and get a big old lot of games for you know dirt cheap kind of like you would have sometimes at some garage sales but yeah it's just probably just use ebay i try to look for auctions ending soonest and um, otherwise I do occasionally search for video games and newly listed. Have you made any, um, video collaborations yet with anybody else? Uh, besides the occasional, uh, challenge videos, um, you know, just, uh, I think I, I did one a while back. What was that one? I did. Uh, I had a buddy on here, fit to play games. He did uh, a challenge for some of us. So it was, uh, what game would we like to see remastered? Um, I I chose. Uh, I was I was a big uh, RPG fan growing up. Um, so I, Legend of Legia was one of my more favorite games. So I ended up, uh, yeah, I wanted. To, I did a video on that. Wanted to remake that one. Um, besides that, we just do kind of the occasional. Uh, Oh, I, here was one one two that I did. Um, Pac Man Case did a what was one of the, kind of the biggest regrets uh, with gaming that we've done, what we've gotten rid of, and the occasional uh, some of the top like f I think top three favorite things in my game room and stuff like that. Um, just that's kind of the only collabs I've really done is between me and my friends is just issuing out challenges and stuff like that to kind of do together, kind of make. It kind of helps come up with video ideas if you're kind of stuck. What other things um, besides games do you collect, like uh, records or toys or anything else? Um, you know, I kind of... Not really too much. Um, I, I I did collect movies for a while, um, but then it, you know with the, the Netflix scene and everything going on with that, everything being digital nowadays, I kind of moved away from that. Um, I was a I am a kind of a, a big Star Wars fan, so I have the occasional uh, Star Wars themed stuff in my game room. Um, I have a couple, uh, yeah, just posters. Uh, I actually have, I, I did for a while there, I was uh, collecting and building Legos. I have a huge uh, Millennium Falcon Lego. I have a, off to the side in my game room here, I have a Captain, or General Grievous, big buildable. Um, I mean, that was pretty much the only thing else that I've been collecting has been video games. A lot of stuff I kind of tend to start collecting, and then I end up, uh, yeah, just, Get either getting rid of it because it's taking up too much room, or I just kind of start losing interest in it, um, and then end up getting rid of it. Otherwise, I I do occasionally look for, I try to look for toys from my childhood, which has been kind of hard because Goodwill has been pretty skimp on that. But oh yeah, you can see right now on the stream, Legend of the G right there. I actually picked that up a few months ago, I think now. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, I, I have looked for toys. I sometimes look for collectibles. But really, video games has been kind of my big focus, um, besides the occasional uh, Lego. Which system do you have the most games for? <sighs> oh, shoot. Um, well, 
I would have to say originally I did. It's got to be probably about a tie between the original NES and uh, OG Xbox. Um, but I have been uh, kind of whittling down on my NES collection. Um, when I first started, that was kind of the thing for me to collect. I just I just love the way, you know, the Nintendo cart looks. And uh, I still have, you know, my earliest video game memories was getting a uh, Nintendo for Christmas one year and getting Super Mario 3. Um, of course, I was very young. I mean, I, I was born in 1987, so that was about the time, you know, that Nintendo was really taken off. So by the time I was about three or four and could start gaming, uh, Nintendo was still being around and everything. So some of my first video game memories have been NES. So I think that was kind of like, I remember kind of having vivid memories from being that young and uh, playing NES games, you know, like Jackal, um, Battletoads, uh, Punch-Out, and stuff like that. So I was kind of like, well, I wanted to get those games first. And so then from then on, it was just kind of like, well, I'm just going to grab whatever, you know. Then I was just kind of like just stacking up on NES games. Every time I saw lots, I was trying to get a good price and buying them. Then I ended up getting all these filler titles, and, you know, I'd hook up the NES for streaming or a video or something like that, or just kind of just when I had some free time to sit down here. And I'd pop in, you know, I'd look through my games, and I was like, well, the only ones I really liked to play were the games from when I was a kid. You know, I'd po I'd try a new game, like, uh trying to see here. I would just pop in a game I'd never heard of. Um, I think there was a... Death Star or Dark Star or something game. I tried Destination Earth Star or something, and I played it for about two minutes, and I was like, well, this is crap. I wasn't a big fan of it. So then I put it off to the side, and I'd grab a couple more filler titles and start doing that, and then I was like, well, why am I even, you know, I was like, I don't even really enjoy any of these NES games. So then I was just kind of, I started whittling down on them. I kind of started laying off the collecting. And then I walked, uh, I, I know I keep talking about them a lot, but Pac-Man Case recently did a video about, you know, why you shouldn't probably collect games in 2020. And I was kind of looking through some of that. And it was like, uh, it was talking about, you know, a lot of the things that were bothering me was having games that I'm never going to have time to play, um, not having enough money for games if I do, would, if I would see one I really wanted from my childhood. I know I, I, I have all these games and I really didn't start buying, you know, like I really wanted games like Legend of Legia and stuff like that, but I didn't have the money to see it any time it popped up because I just got done spending, you know, 20, 30 bucks on a bunch of filler titles that I might not play. So then I was like, my my collecting, yeah, went from then. So then I was like, well, when the original Xbox came out, I I really enjoyed that. Games like uh, Halo, um, Jade Empire, uh, Mech Assault, uh, Morrowind. And then I was like, well, I would, you know, I'd actually play those if I got the time so I'd be more likely to play those than some NES game that I wasn't didn't enjoy so probably the biggest collections I have as of right now are my NES one and uh yeah my original Xbox but I kind of they're kind of all a little even I got a bunch of PS2 titles a bunch of PS3 titles um 360 and original Xbox got a funny question for you does it bother you when you have a lot of games that you get from GameStop and they, and they, you know, slap like five stickers all over them. You leave that or yes. you take them off? So honestly, I, I don't, I haven't shopped at GameStop um, in the past few years. I, 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 it might be because I'm cheap or whatever. And it might also be because I don't have one near me um, to be a membership, but I still have a sour, a sour taste in my mouth from when I was a kid and I, uh, and probably not nothing that they did. It was really my, uh, it was really my, uh, myself, but I, I brought in a bunch of games and, you know, and the typical kid bringing in all his games that are probably worth, you know, three to $400 and they'd give me like 60 bucks and I'd get one game out of it. So I, you know, I really haven't been to a GameStop forever, but yeah, GameStop stickers really bugged the crap out of me. Um, but Stickers like from Captain Video or, you know, Blockbuster, stuff that are kind of more like relics. Like I have a, I think it's Solstice. I have an actual 
uh, on NES. I have an actual rental case from a from a. I think. Let me see if I can. It's an actual video rental place that had it. Um, yeah, video video update is what it was called in uh, Long Longview, Wisconsin. And I, that that stuff I love, like the actual relics and the really cool stickers and stuff. But yeah, if I just got one that just basically says GameStop across the top of it, it's kind of like eh. But I tend to mow more for it. Like there has been some games where I haven't took stickers off because yeah, I I like the the old style rental places and some of those ones I'll stick on there. But it is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes when you go to a Goodwill and you get one and then you go home and you try to peel the sticker off and yeah, that sticky residue behind, or you got that freaking, you use your finger to try and scratch at it, and then you just end up freaking, you know, scratching a big hole in the case. Yeah. That, that's happened to me before, too. So you do you go through the, the aggravation of goo-gawning those, those GameStop stickers off? So, no. Uh, I, I have... I've tried it before in the past, and... It's been, it's just, it, I end up just getting more frustrated. I'll, I'll try and get it off and I'll end up actually messing it up more. And then it's just becomes, then I'm just, you know, the collector part of me is just like, oh God, you just ruined this, it's ruined. And then I just almost go into a depressive state because I feel like I've ruined the game, you know. But the only times I really kind of, remove stuff like that is if it's just kind of on the outside um, of like maybe a, a, a cart instead of the actual case but I tend to yeah because I'm looking at like Bioshock right now and, and it does look and it, it does bother me somewhat being on the shelf because I'm just looking at this nice you know nice shelf of all these games and then there's just one yellow GameStop sticker on the on the spine that's poking out and it, it bugs me sometimes, but then I just try to remind myself as, you know, do I want to risk bringing it out and taking it off and destroying it or I just kind of suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> yeah. I like to, I like to ask like shit like that. Cause it, it tells me the level of a collector. Like sometimes there's, I like to gauge on a one to ten scale, the OCD level yeah. of a collector, because everybody's on a different level. I talk to people right. that don't give a fuck if the whole top label's ripped off a fucking NES cart, and yeah. then I'll talk to somebody that like, you know, wants every cart looking like new. There's there's levels yep. of every type of correct uh, collector, and the OCD factor that the factors in. Yeah, um, I I I remember a while back there was a guy that was uh. He had uh, mountains of NES inbox games, and he had copies of several ones, and he was picking up more copies of them. He's like, well, I'm trying to pick up this one because the one manual that I have has a little crinkle in it. And I'm trying to pick up this other one because the one box has just this one spot that has just a tiny bit peeling off. And he said, I want, he's like just purposely trying to get the perfect, the most perfect one you can get, you know. And it's just looking at him like, wow, man, oh, yeah, I mean, it looks awesome, but it's just kind of like, it's like crazy, like, okay. Um, but then I also have, you know, you have me down here too. Um, okay, I got to have the certain games, you know, with a certain section, and then it's like, well, I need to get more games because this, this shelf isn't filled all the way. So then I'll try to fill the shelf. Well, then I'll be like, well, I have my PS2 games now, with my PS3 games because I tried to fill that shelf. So now I need to get more of these games to put that down. And then it just becomes kind of like a loop. Like uh, there was a couple nights where my wife would wake up in the morning and, you know, I'd kind of come upstairs, get something to drink before I'd go to sleep, to sleep during the day for night shift. And she'd go, what did you do last night? And I said, you know, I spent probably about two or three hours taking every game off my shelf just to kind of make it put, put it right in a different place that you know kind of made more sense to me <laughs> yeah that's that's a very collector thing to do um you know um i would gauge myself at like a seven or eight condition i like to have stuff in good or very good condition now meaning like if we're talking like an action figure that not 
kind of the paint is rubbed off of it or if it's yep. like a game i like the label fully intact like if it's an nes cart or a super nintendo cart um i like the label pretty much fully intact it could be scuffed up or have scratches on it but right i want the label fully intact if it's like torn off on a part of it i probably don't want that cart or if i got it for a good deal i'd sell it off um, yeah so i get i gauge myself at like a seven or an eight for there, like yeah. i don't have to have stuff mint uh this space though i do have one thing is i do not like loose i don't like uh putting i like to have the case for it um i and i tend to have you know it's kind of to me it's just i'd rather i want to have the the original case for it um i i did it for a while there have some loose um this floating around but i mean carts i don't mind i you know like i said i get any nes games i want i i just get them loose because you know if you try to first off it's almost impossible nowadays to find the boxes for any of these um and if you do find them they're they're crazy you know priced um and then they might not even be in good shape but loose i mean I I I wouldn't I don't like the disc loose and I don't like just buying a plain DVD case and putting them in there that bother that bothers me so I do like to have the original case um, for them and I even even like over in my PlayStation section I think I have Final Fantasy Tactics and uh, Par- Parasite Eve I have them in just paper sleeves and it bugs the crap out of me sometimes you know uh, it makes me think of a funny story. Well, funny to me because it's like me battling myself. In college, I had a bad habit of doing kind of the shit you said, like selling off like games to GameStop or, you know, when you're in college, you don't have a lot of money right? or DVDs. So what I did to do, uh, (laughs) what I did to make sure I don't, I don't do that anymore was I actually threw out all the cases. To my DVDs <laughs> and put them in a booklet because that yep. way I could not sell them back. So it forced myself to keep those because yep. I got so sick and tired of doing that and then regretting it. <laughs> oh, so I, as a I, as a defense mechanism against myself, I and I still have all those DVDs and there was stuff like you know all the Simpsons seasons and just shit that I was like I don't want to fucking lose these again. So, yeah. Yeah, if you don't want to, oh, hey, uh, new Halo's coming out, and you're like, oh, I don't have any money for it, and your buddy's like, uh, your your buddy's like, oh, oh, hey, I just got the new Halo, you want to get on playing? And it's like, well, man, I don't have it. And he's like, well, okay, that sucks, uh uh-huh. and then he'll get off, and then he'll go, you know, and then you're like, whoa, oh. then you just go, you know, trade all your stuff in just to, just to get it, and, um, and I was talking about that earlier with that re- uh, regrets video that we did, that challenge video. And my biggest regret was, like I was saying with that GameStop, was as a kid, I had, you know, a bunch of PS1 RPGs that are worth so much money nowadays. Um, I think, like, Lunar Silver Story, Lunar Eternal Blue. uh, You have all the Final Fantasies. um, Parasite Eve 1 and 2. I had all these PS1 RPGs that are worth good money nowadays, and I would love to have my collection. And I probably, I don't even know, I I think I was at the time I was... uh, how old was that? I probably would have been about 14 or 15. Um, and I didn't know anybody. My, my buddy told me, he goes, Hey, you know, if you take these games in the GameStop, you can get a, you can get more games. I was like, Oh yeah. He's like, yeah, they'll give you a credit for them. I was like, no nah, way. Cause you know, as a kid, I didn't believe that crap. But right. I showed up and I did it. And then they, and at, when you're that old, you know, 14, you know, $80 is, it seems like a bunch to you. So I turned all, all those in and they're like, Hey, yeah, we can give you about $80 credit. And I was like, Oh, awesome. That means I can get like two or three new games to play. So then I'd get them. And then, you know, I would just, yeah, it would just end up being like, I thought about it later on. And I was like, man, you know, why did I do that? Because there were some of those games I never beat. And, you know, and then, then I would get like, I think it was something stupid too. I think I got two games and a Game Shark for my PlayStation, which, you know, I used it, like, on two games, and I didn't even know really how to run it. So that was, yeah, that was that was a big regret. (laughs) 
um, you know, when, when, uh, I was thinking of something that, uh, Haytham Gruxton said in the chat about the greatest hits version when yep. they put those out. So I see it in the chat. I don't know why our goddamn fucking playlist keeps stopping every fucking five <laughs> minutes, but it is. Um, <laughs> And that's also throwing off what I'm trying to think of at the same time to ask you. Yeah. Uh, but the, what he was saying about the greatest hits version of games, I'm trying to think. I don't understand why logically they do that. Because I think they know that a lot of collectors don't want those greatest hits versions because they, they look a lot different than the, the, than the, in the, the labeling and the packaging of the normal original releases. And I was trying to think to myself, why do they do that? They have the capability to just print the game like the original run. I know that they yeah. want to sell them at a reduced price, and they want to kind of flash that. It's the greatest hits. It's on sale. But I'm trying yeah. to think logically why they wouldn't just put a sticker on it on the outside and then essentially sell the same version. Because why have alternate versions of a game? Like, for example, PlayStation, you know, when they have a greatest hits version, it'll be like red and instead yep. of clear, like the, at least on PS3, they were, I don't know. You're, you're probably familiar with that, right? You uh, know how it'll be red? Yeah. But I'm actually looking at a couple right now. And, but what's really, really, really standing out to me is the goddamn PlayStation one games and that big or our big green tab on the end. Like I'm looking at my PS one titles and you got those nice black spines going down. And then you got the green tabs on each of them. That's say greatest hits. But yeah, I I I get that too. Like I'm yeah, looking at the PS3 ones, and yeah, it's it's that bright red. It just stands out. And I don't. The only thing I can think of, it's just kind of a way. I mean, for lack of better terms, for them to kind of wave their wieners around more, you know, just saying that, hey, you know, look how awesome this game is that we made. It's so awesome that it's sold this many, and then we, you know, we packed on. Um, this, this stamp of approval from us and, you know, buy it. And that's the only way I could think of it because I don't, I mean, I think a lot of times um, they don't have in their mind, you know, collectors wanting it to look nice and stuff like that. And I think it just comes down to, you know, with anything, just trying to, to just kind of show them that, hey, you know, this game that we, we made is awesome. Um, if you haven't bought it yet, here, buy this at a reduced price, um, and we even put on there that it sold so much that greatest hits. I think that's about the right. only reason I can think they would do it. Exactly, it's a it's a it's a curious case. It's, a, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing, um, because I, I I hear way more hate for it than people are like, I, and I don't think I've ever heard somebody say, "I love getting the greatest hits version of that." <laughs> And what's the, funny the about only... it is, what's funny about it is, is the exactly opposite of the '90s, right? Remember, remember what sold the fucking most of anything in the '90s? What was it? A fucking band putting out a greatest hits album, right? It yep. sold like a. I think one of the, the the highest selling albums is like that fucking Eagles Eagles Greatest Hits or whatever sold who almost as much as fucking Thriller, and it's like right? people were buying up those like you know Aerosmith Greatest Hits or whatever. That shit yeah. was just selling like crazy in the nineties. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I can understand that too. Like one of my favorite CDs I had was that uh the corn one with greatest hits. Uh just had all the really good ones and the, the I could see I could see it a little bit more with music because it's like if you kinda like a band but you don't wanna go fumbling through five CDs just to listen to, you know, two popular songs that they had. I can I I can see it that way, but yeah I they don't even do anything special for the video games. I mean they they don't add any extra content. They don't put anything in there that's collectible. It's yeah it just seems like a big waste. Just make it a make it just like the way it was, or yeah like you said, put a sticker on there or just sell it at a reduced price. Yeah, that's my thing. They could make the game exactly as the original print run. And slap just greatest hits on it. Best yep. best seller, greatest hits. Instead of like yeah, except, completely changing the whole form factor of it. 
Yep. Yep. Just making Anyways, it stand out more. Right. And uh, the funny thing too is about, you know, we were talking about you don't really stop at, shop at GameStop anymore because of those memories. And I'm sure yep. a lot of people have those memories too. And and why GameStop gets a lot of hate because people, so many people remember getting screwed over in their in their yep. early twenties. Uh, on the buyback prices, but um, yeah. the other thing about about GameStop used games is if they're everywhere. So yep. you could be. It doesn't matter if you're in a yard sale, or a garage sale, or on eBay. Fucking half the games are gonna have those stickers on them because that's where they came from. Oh yeah, and I'm and I was kind of talking about you know the, the kind of going the theme about waving your wiener around for greatest hits. That was kind of their way of peeing on everything and marking their territory was. Oh, we got this game. We better put a sticker on it so they know. Everybody, everybody knows they got it from GameStop. Yep, you got it from GameStop. Oh, you like this game? You should go check out GameStop. That's and it's like sticker, 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 sticker. <laughs> it's like, what the hell, man? And the worst one, it, I mean, I wouldn't even care if they put one on there and stuff. But the worst part is, is when they take out the inner lining, and then they put it on the actual spine of the paper on the inside, and then slide it back in. I don't know when the hell they started doing that, but that was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. That was just like you're covering up, you're covering up part of the game. I, I when I was a kid, right. I thought I remember them putting it actually on the case and not on the actual manual and stuff itself. Right. It's like why don't, why don't you just take a permanent marker and scribble GameStop all over it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Describe crazy GameStop like some kid uh, you get an NES games from a garage sale and it's just got his Patrick C all over it or something. <laughs> right. I like that you uh, are into collecting the console boxes because I am too. And, and you, you know, you know, you think about that when we were growing up. When when you when you really when the new console was released, they they try to catch your eye with the box art yep. on those console boxes. And that's almost more was more important to me than getting like the NES boxes. Like I'm not, I, I don't have too many NES boxes that came with the carts, but I right. made sure to get like the NES action set console box and the Super Nintendo box, like the same one you got there on your shelf. That was more important to me to get that because that kind of completes the feeling of owning the console. Yep. So if you can kind of see behind my head right now, you can see the Sega Genesis box. Now that is actually, I picked that up on Macari for I think 60 bucks free shipping. And they sent that to me and it still kind of had most of the original stuff sitting in there. I think the styrofoam might've been, was still there, but I think the manual and stuff was gone, but they still had the, you know, the original Sonic and uh, Sonic two that came with it and stuff like that, which was really cool because after the NES, that, Everybody else had Super Nintendos, and I was, for some reason, a kid that had a Sega. So Sega kind of, Sega holds a big place in my heart just simply because of that. Growing up, you know, I would love to go over to my buddy's house because they'd have Mario Kart. They'd have Super Mario World. We'd stay up all night, you know, playing that. And then I'd come home and just play Sonic, you know. And at the time, I was kind of – I kind of held – rage almost for it because it's like oh my friends have a super nintendo i got a sega why did i get one of those but now growing up you know it's just kind of like it was like having memories of that when i'm watching somebody do a top 10 uh sega games and i'll i will see a game that i actually forgot about like uh one day uh somebody was talking about there was a a fighting game where the people were made out of balls and i totally gone from my memory i never even remembered it and then i seen that and it instantly brought me back to when i was like 10 years old you know or whatever my dad took me to the movie place to rent a movie or something like that and i was you know he, he we'd get in there and i'd kind of sit around with him for a couple minutes and then i just kind of stand there and he'd be like you can go look at the games and i you know sprint over there and be like, yeah and then you know i'd sit there longer looking for a game to rent than he would a movie and then you know then it came the time to beg to to rent it and then you know he find up doing it but yeah it was just and then there's just something about the boxes if i can find a box for the system at a decent price then i'm definitely gonna jump on it even like you said that super nintendo box behind me i think i paid 50 bucks um 50 bucks for a super nintendo with the box uh, a couple of games and stuff like that 
and I'd already had the Super Nintendo. I've already had a Super Nintendo and stuff. So I ended up selling the Super Nintendo, and basically I got that box for free then. So I ended up selling that. I kept the games, kept the controllers, sold, or I kept one of the controllers. I ended up selling it. So then I had the box, and it was like, well, cool. And then my, you know, my wife's like, well, she, you know, she doesn't understand it sometimes. But like, what do you want the box? I said, I don't know. It just, it just something about seeing that, reminding myself of when I was a kid, um, being at Walmart, being at Pomida, being at Kmart. And just sitting there and just mom shopping and my face up against the glass, just staring at it like, oh, man, I really want that. I really want that. And just looking at the box and everything standing out like you were talking about. They tried to make the box look so inviting and stuff like that. And even like the, the Sega and the Super Nintendo one actually are kind of plain. But, man, you look at that Odyssey 2 box back there, and that's like, you know, 70s, like, wow man look at this you put this in here and whoa and it's just kind of cool and the story behind that odyssey 2 box was actually kind of crazy somebody it was my actual kids principal locally here he posted on facebook he'd been on there for weeks nobody he only wanted i think 50 or 50 bucks or something for it and he said i didn't know if he if it ran or anything so i'm just kind of like whatever you know I was like, if anything, I got the box. And I got home and I opened it up and it still had all the original stuff in there. I don't know if you can see behind me in some of these images. I don't think I have it up there anymore, but it still had like the warranty information, the ordering guide. Because back then, you know, um, if you, I'm not, you, you guys have watched my retro life and stuff like that. He talks about a lot of times you had to order games. You couldn't just go to the store and pick them up. So it actually had an order guide in there. Say, if you want these games, fill out a check, send it to this address, and we'll send it through the mail. And it just had a bunch of the random stuff. It has the old, uh, I can't think what they're called off the top of my head, not the RF modulator, but they're kind of like that where you have the the two little forks and you got to screw it into the TV. It had all the, it had like four of them still in box and stuff like that. And it was crazy. And I, you know, I asked him and I was just like, well, you know, you want 50 bucks for it. Would you take 40? And he said, yeah, you know, and we worked out a deal. And then, like, two months later, I still got it over here on the side. Two months later, he messages me. He said, hey, I found this in the garage. You interested in it? And it was like a Sears arcade system or something like that. And it's just basically a Sears is knocked off um, of, I think, in television. And then so I was like, yeah, and I said, how much do you want for it? And they said, just come over and pick it up. So I showed up. I picked it up and it's it's covered in dust. It's been sitting in a garage in an attic or something for months, you know, years, years, just as old, about as old as that Odyssey too. And he goes, you know what? How about this? I know I'll see you again because you know he's the principal and stuff, and one of my kids tends to get in trouble a little bit. But he said, I'll tell you what, if it uh, if it uh, if it works, twenty bucks. If you can't get it to work, don't worry about it. So yeah, I mean, and but there's just something about the boxes, and that's and I really wanted to get the NES boxes because I love the way they look. But it, like I said, it just, you know, I, I'm, uh, I have three boys. You know, I have my wife's uh, staying at home right now with our two year old, and uh, you know, obviously I have more priorities than spending all my money on the collection. So I would really originally like you know get more NES boxes, but. It just comes down to logic sometimes, and, yeah, I kind of, you know, pick and choose what I want and what looks good at the time. Now, let me ask you this. Let's, I mean, do you have a ballpark estimate of how many games in your entire collection? Do you have, like, a ballpark rough estimate? Um, I'd probably say, I'd probably say about three to four hundred. Three to four hundred. Yeah. Okay. Now, not now, count. Not not. Oh, let's say not counting my modded uh, Super Nintendo Classic. Right. Yeah. Let's not count that. Let's count the physical one. So let's yep. just let's just say you have four hundred. All right. Now, being honest with yourself, how many of those have you played? So eighty percent. Seventy percent. Fifteen to twenty percent, maybe. I mean, honestly, okay. uh, you can got I, I, since I've got them. Um, kind of like I said, I I I've been trying to you know 
I, I collecting's not the priority, you know, playing games is kind of not the priority since I became a father and stuff like that. So working the schedule that I work, having the responsibilities at home, I don't get enough time to sit down and play. And, uh, not as much as I would like to, because I, you know, I have a, a 13 and 14 year old and I have a two year old. So I'm constantly busy with sports, uh, with taking care of them. Um, but a lot of those games, I, you know, were just picked ups and, you know, the whole, the thing in the back of my mind, someday I'll play this, someday I'll play this. And, you know, it just kind of comes down to sometime is just old, reliable, you know, playing the games that you know you love. So it's like, right. Well, should I try? Should I, 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 that happened one time on my channel. I was kind of forcing myself to play, I think, one of the Knights and Magic game or something like that. And I was not into it. And I was trying to play it and I was trying to play it. And I was just, I couldn't handle it anymore. And I even said it on the recording. I said, I can't play this anymore. It's just, it's just bringing me down. So it's a lot of the times it's like when I finally do get time to sit down to play a game, it's like, okay, which one of these games uh, am I going to, am I really going to enjoy? You know, Morrowind. I know I love Morrowind. Skyrim. I know I love Skyrim. Um, Metal Gear Solid. Um, Crash. You know, going back to playing the games that I want. And uh, I know I don't know if you can see it in the stream back there, but I do have a Sega Dreamcast box, which uh, has a uh, box uh, controller and the system. And the system actually has the original receipt in it from the guy before when he bought it. I think, God, I can't remember exactly when that was purchased, but um, but he has it in there and stuff like that. So I bought that Sega Dreamcast about probably about a good two years ago now. I think I played it for about 30 minutes. And right. I mean, I don't have the problem with it was I was, I was, everybody was always talking about how an underrated system it was, how great it was. So I finally got one. I go to look at the prices for the games and my jaw just dropped. Everybody's like, play Power Stone, you know, play, uh, with the sky, skies of Arcadia, stuff like that. And then I'm like, okay. And then I looked at the prices and I go, Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll get uh, is uh, and that's what I've been kind of talking about with their collection sometimes too. Is that I've been kind of weaseling some stuff off here and there to try and get games that I I, I'm, I want for my house. You know, trying to go starting to trying to more move more towards quality over quantity. Right, and that's another reason I asked you that question just just because like going back to the one about what condition people like to get their stuff in as a collector. It's just as interesting to me knowing how many games, because it's all over the place too. You get your collectors that will get a stack of games and they'll pop each one maybe in for 10 minutes and then they mm. maybe never play it again. You know, there's right. like collectors like that. There's collectors that, you know, will use their collection kind of like a library, just kind of pick out something every night. And then there's there's collectors that, you know, like you said, you're you're busy with your kids, so you only get to play fifteen to twenty percent. And I've yeah. gotten in the bad habit myself with the modern that I have tons that have sat in the drawer that I stupidly probably even paid full price for when they came out. Right. And they ended up just sat in there, sitting there. Yep. And what's funny is you get that kind of release that that uh video game release uh trigger trigger purchase, you know. Because there's all that hype when something's coming out, and you're like, "Oh shit, this game's coming out!" And you see the you see the TV ad, or you see it yep. when you're fucking browsing YouTube, and you get that impulse, and then it ends up just sitting in a drawer, and then you're like, "I could have waited two months and paid twenty bucks for that fucking game." So, so it's it's funny about buying games like that. So being being a cheap gamer and wanting to buy games on the cheap, that is the biggest biggest thing with me. Um, and that was, we were talking earlier about GameStop and that was one of my things that I did not like about GameStop. I'd go in there, pay 60 bucks for that game, take it home as a kid, had nothing better to do, but play that game, you know, beat it in two days, try and take it back. And then give me maybe 30 bucks or something for it. So it's like, Hey man, I just paid like 60 bucks for this the other day. And they're like, yeah, well I can give you 30 for it. And then I'll go over, I'll be like, all right, you know, a kid, I, I don't have any more money and I want to get a new game, so I guess it'll work. Then I'll go over to the guy, you know, the shelf, and then they'll, they'll have it used, 
$55 now instead of 60 brand new. And it was like, well, what right. the heck? They couldn't at least give me like 40 or something. And I mean, it's not, it's not too far different than basically pawn shop strategy. Yep. I mean, they're literally like, you know, it's like somebody, you know, hard up for cash, taking in like $800 TV and the, the pawn shop manager says, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. I mean, right. they almost might as well say, let me just take you in a back alley and kick you in the balls. It'll be yep. about as a, the amount of money I'm going to give you for this. And, um, you know, just think, just thinking about that kind of makes me laugh, too, because those used to be kind of my favorite uh, if, my favorite kind of people that I'd buy stuff from game-wise would be the, I hate to, you know, lack of a better word, the crackheads that were trying to get their next fix. And they'd have, right. you know, hey, hey, I have a 10... 10 Xbox games, you know what? Uh, uh, you know, and then yeah, I was like, uh, I'm like, well, I, uh, what do you want for it? I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, you 20 bucks? Yeah, okay. yeah sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just like, all right, yeah, yeah, man, I'll give you 20 bucks for that. And they're like, okay, and then they just take off. And it's like, sweet. <laughs> I just got a bunch of games for 20 bucks. I can't stand, <laughs> dude, I can't stand pawn shops. Like, they're the, just the, the sleaziest bastards of people that, that run yep. those things. I mean, they're, they're, they're they're one step above like like some kind of underground mob. It, it's just completely yep. yeah, like a loan shark. Is they're yeah. a legal loan shark is what they are basically. Exactly. And then yeah, and you know, and I mean, how many people in the past have they ripped off for wedding rings, you know, stuff like that where people didn't have money, they lost a job, they needed money to get food for their kids, and you know, stuff like that, and they bring something in like that that's valuable, they don't give them crap for it, and then, the you know, the person's never able to go back and pay it off, and yeah, it's right. just... They, they it's definitely prey on the like poor. That. They prey on yeah. the poor worse than the lottery than the lottery tickets do. Right. You, know? <laughs> you, see, you see poor people all day running to yeah. get those lottery tickets, right? And, and they're, just, they're yeah. just burning that money up. Oh man, those it's, fucking yeah, they, they're I, addicted to those fucking scratch offs, right? Yeah, and that's just preying on all those <laughs> poor people that are like barely paying their rent every month. Yeah, it's like, hey man, you got a you got a twenty three point three seven percent chance to win your money back here. Um, so that means if you buy four of them, you might win once. <laughs> right, and then you got your money back like they it's like you, you see the casino commercials and everybody's fucking having a blast and chips are flying in the air and fucking <laughs> girls are you know tits are hanging out in yeah. dresses how about the guy <laughs> why don't they show the fucking 50 year old dad crying on a bench that he can't pay his mortgage that month because he lost the nest egg he's a, yeah he's a div, right? yeah he's addicted to addicted to gambling and sold off his kids bikes to go freaking gamble or you know just crap like that <laughs> <laughs> so what what system right now is is your because because as a collector i'm sure you've gone through phases like you said you're hot on nes for a while you love the way the carts look what's what's really your go-to right now just the system you're gunning for collecting the most for uh I something about the original Xbox. Um, there's there's something about the cases. I love that green. Um, and I remember, you know, that Christmas when my grandma surprised me with one when they first came out. I didn't think I was gonna get one, and she surprised it with me. And you know, I ran home and I, you know, firing up for the first time and seeing that. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but that liquid going blah, 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 and then blowing up to that screen, and then goes nah, 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 and then it starts up and playing halo and just being freaking amazed by the graphics you know that was like my first um one of my first first person shooters that i really got into that was really you know jived for and it was just you know then that's kind of been because the prices for the original xbox have been very good lately um and it's and it's more been kind of a i think it's more of a nostalgic thing too is being uh, just because I had one for a while, and it was kind of one of those things too where I got the Xbox, but all my friends got a different console. <laughs> so I've been having bad choices in the past when it comes to new consoles. I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna get an Xbox. All my friends get PS2s. 
<laughs> it's like right. come over there. It's like uh. But then that when that happened though, I did have a lot of buddies that liked to come over to my house because everybody likes playing Halo. You know, Halo one, two, and three and Reach are some of the best first person shooters anyway. And after that, I kind of really don't talk too much about them. But but well, it was just already, that. It was. You're already preaching to the choir about yeah. loving Xbox because I've always yeah. been. I've always been like the Xbox defender when everybody shits on yeah. the Xboxes, and I don't get it. I think what really fucked the X the Xbox reputation was the fucking red circle of death. You know, yep. fucking thirty percent of the consoles dying on upon release. So, I think that's what really so, fucked them over. And then when they did the Xbox One, and we're trying to talk about it's going to be digital only, or you can't. You know that whatever that catastrophe was at the at the convention, I think it's unfortunate because they're both such good fucking consoles, yep. and nobody nobody wants to kind of it's just like politics. Nobody wants to find some common fucking ground and agree that both systems are really good. Everybody just kind of wants to be a dick and say, "Oh, this yep. one's better." You know how it is. This is kind of just the reality of yep. living on planet Earth. So cool. it's it's. It's unfortunate because they're such great systems. Xbox Original, Xbox yep. 360, Xbox One, they're all fantastic fucking consoles. Yep. So I used to be I I was I was probably pretty much an Xbox fanboy. And it's kinda and it was, you know, I Xbox, you know, they're trying to do their they're trying to do their own thing. They're trying to stand out from, you know, the Eastern the gaming subs because, you know, that's about all we have for you know over here in the west of the world is about all we have is xbox you know and they're trying to stand out and they're trying to do different things and to me they killed it when they came out with achievements that was kind of the thing that really stood them out and obviously you know the the connect was a big big the in theory it sounded amazing and it looked kind of like it could be good but it was kind of just no um but yeah, it was just kind of, it's just something about Xbox that I grew up and going into retro collecting, um, I I would defend Xbox, but I I would also have a Sony. And, you know, we were talking about what, uh, you know, what I've been playing lately is I finally bought a PS3. I haven't owned the Sony system since the PS2. And I finally bought a PS3. And, you know, I've been, the retro gaming has actually stopped me from being a fanboy. And, you know, stop being like, this console's better, this console's better. It's like, no, almost every console has something that's amazing on them. Um, I I stopped buying Nintendo systems after the Wii. I kind of stayed away from them. But I finally bought a Switch, and, you know, I, I loved Mario, and I loved all that stuff. But I was kind of, you know, buying a system is expensive, man, especially a new one. I mean, it's not like finding a Super Nintendo at a garage sale for 15 bucks, but it's a, it's a big investment. Right. And that's like talking right. with PS5 and Xbox Series X or whatever coming up. You know, that's they're putting the price range in the five, 600 bucks, and it's just like, holy crap, man. And it actually took me, I think, two years after the 360 was released before I finally got one. And I got lucky, and I got the Jasper unit or whatever it was. So mine lasted about seven years. But I had, you know, you were talking about that Red Ring of Death, and that was that was a momentum killer for them. The Xbox did amazing, and they were coming into the 360. Here's all the games we have, you know. Look at Oblivion. Look at just, just how great this looks. Mass Effect, everything, how amazing it looks. But don't play the game for too long. Don't, don't turn your Xbox when it's on, because then you'll burn a ring in your disc. And then, yeah, you had that Xbox. I had a buddy... At, we were at Job Corps here, and he bought a 360. He had that thing for two weeks, and it started overheating. He got it sent in. They fixed it. They sent it back. About a month later, it started doing the same exact thing. And it was a momentum killer. But the 360, though, I think after they got that figured out, though, and, you know, if you kind of want to ask me, I'm pr- I think the 360 won that war, that console war. And, you know, yeah. they had such great games and stuff for it, and they, they – they had a slow start, but, you know, they tried. They they at least kept trying to fix it and kind of started, you know, trying to do something about it. And, like, that's kind of the only issue I have with the Switch right now is they don't seem to even be trying to do anything about this drift issue with their controllers. And those dang things are still selling for, like, 120 bucks. 
It's because people so, have to keep buying them. <laughs> I had I had the 360 and the PS3, and this yep. is the first console generation where I have all three. I have um, the Xbox One, the PS4, and the and the and the Switch because I've never had like all three at once. Right. I've never had Nintendo, Microsoft, and Play and Sony consoles all at the same time from the uh, from the the existing generation i've never had that before because like you said the it's so expensive to do so but i don't know why for me i think i like i really think that I, i'm trying to pinpoint the reasons why i i kind of prefer the xbox experience um i like the layouts better on xbox I think the Xbox Live Marketplace destroys the PlayStation Store. Yes. I've looked through both. I just don't think they know how to fucking make a good layout on the PlayStation Store. Yep. I don't know what the... It's the most generic fucking looking thing. It looks it like you're going to buy... It looks <laughs> like you're going to buy fucking goddamn like pool supplies off the fucking yeah. PlayStation Store. It looks so boring and generic. Um, yeah. Xbox no, knows no. how to make a really good layout and transition. Yeah. And the Xbox controller fits in my hand like a glove. And something yeah. about the PlayStation controllers sometimes feels stock. I like the PS4 one probably the best so far. But the PS3, it, it, it feels like a fucking, almost like an aftermarket fucking generic fucking controller. I don't know. It just feels kind of yep. cheap. And the Xbox just just controller, I don't know why it fits better in my hand. I like it better for first-person shooters. I like the actual yep. triggers on it versus the the um more the rubber bumpers on the the PlayStation. So it's like all those reasons, dude. That, yeah, and that I, mean, I that I think I prefer it. The only thing you know bad was bad was the original one. That thing was the Duke. That thing was oh, so yeah, it was massive. It was hard. Oh man, that was right. horrible. But then they got the X, you know, the Xbox S controller. And there's something about something about having the thumbs, you know, where they are that makes shooters so much easier to kind of just it's perfect looking. And like you said, um, you know, that was the biggest thing that the Sony fanboys had for the longest time was, well, PS3 online is free. You know, you don't have to pay, you know, 20 bucks for three months and stuff like that. But then I'd go over to my buddy's house and the, con the connectivity, the networking. And all that other stuff was, like you said, just very generic, very just quickly thrown together. We lose yeah. connections all the time, and it wasn't, it wasn't because of our internet. It was just because, well, the system went down. And then I remember that one, that one big scare when those hackers or whatever they hacked into the network and got everybody's information because, you know, and then uh -huh. it was just crazy. And like you said, it was just, I mean. I think Dreamcast was the first one to have online, but Xbox was about the first one to really smash it out, you know, to get the connectivity by, to have just the way, it was just so fluent and it just went together so nice and it was just, yeah, it was just, they they got it good going there. And yeah. And I'm just, somebody too and, that, I'm always looking to give Sony a chance. I All my TVs yep. are Sony in my house. Like yep. I said, I had the PS3, I had the PS4. I'm not talking out of my ass when I say that comparing the two, I think the layout's better on the Xbox. I have both yep. to, to look at side by side. I turn on one, I turn yep. on the other. I've looked at them plenty of times, <laughs> and I don't know what the fuck. It's Sony. They got their head up their ass with that layout on the PlayStation Store. It sucks. If I was the marketing guy there or the design yep. consultant, I'd say the redo the whole fucking PlayStation Store. It's ass. Yep. It's completely boring to go on yep. that PlayStation Store. It's it's unacceptable. And Sony's got that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thing. I mean, and you know they, they joke around about that with the controllers. If you look at the controllers over the years, they, you know, basically just add something here, add something here, but they keep that general. Thing. So I think that's their mentality with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know. But, but yeah, that's that's exactly it. And then going back to your thing, uh, talking about yeah, having all the consoles. I've been I've been trying to find a good price on a PS4 
And the main thing that made, sold me on getting a PS3, besides I got a great deal on my car, I got a box PS3 with the manuals and stuff in it for 50 bucks, um, which is unheard of right now. But I, uh, yeah, that's what, I mean, the exclusives is what so, P- PlayStation has right now that I think is, they're really, they're good striving. I mean, Xbox's exclusives have kind of gone away and, you know, you have Uncharted, you got Spider-Man, you have God yeah. of War, all these great, great Sony exclusives. And that's what really is like, I'm sitting over here like, I really want a PS4. And then, so when I bought that PS3, I think I bought 30 games up in the first week because I wanted to get all the Uncharted. I wanted to get all the God of Wars and I wanted to get, you know, whatever on the pace, uh, the Ratchet and Clanks and stuff like that. But of course I haven't even played them yet. I mean, I, I started because I wanted to play The Last of Us because The Last of Us 2 came out and it's been huge, you know, and I, I haven't even played the original one yet. And all these people are playing that one and it's just kind of been like, I'm late to the party. And then by the time I finally get a PS4, probably PS5 is going to be out and everybody's going to be doing this and that now. But I mean, that's what it comes. It comes down to just what, what can you play when you can? And each, each system has its strong point and there's no use fighting over it anymore. And I, I really wish, and it's never going to happen because everybody likes money. I really wish that they would hook something up, get cross play going and I know it's hard to say, but I, I kind of wish they'd get rid of exclusive games and then just share the wealth, man. Just stop. Yeah. Having people have to choose something over each other just so you can get an extra buck. And I am kind of happy that they are trying to open up the cross play more. So that way you can play with your friends more. Cause that's really going multi plat platform is amazing. And I really wish I could play, you know, I have a buddy with a PS4 and I play on my Xbox One, and we both have Battlefront, and we can't play together, and that and that sucks. Right. And it's like my bigger issue with 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 the the choosing the side thing is like it 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 always it seems like it sounds so middle school in the comments of the yeah. videos, or the yeah. just the forums. <laughs> it's very middle school. It's like it just just oh Xbox sucks. Yeah. Like nobody breaks it. How about like putting some bullet points? Why you don't <laughs> like it? Like I, I went into detail about yeah. like what I like about Xbox, the the Xbox Live yeah. Marketplace, the layout, the the design. <laughs> the, I like the controller form factor better. You know, how, how about like doing that instead of? It's very like the you go on you go online. It's so much stuff is middle school, right? Middle school. Yeah. What what do kids do in middle school? It's like, you know, they, they they don't even have hair on their balls yet, so they basically yeah. just use use like, you know, just cheap language, just just name calling and that everything yeah. sucks or it's cool. Oh, you like you like, like the, Xbox? You suck. You suck, man. Right. Why? I, you suck. You have an Xbox. Oh, Master Chief this. You know, it's just yeah. like what what don't you like about Xbox? And that's all they can just say is oh all you got is Master Chief. I've talked to grown adults <laughs> that can't seem to back up why they say that. I'm like, yeah. why Why does it suck specifically? For what reason? Right. And they'll they'll bring up stuff, like I said, the fucking red ring, or they'll, they'll bring up, like, yeah. a few fail points. And it's like, but can you define, like, mm-hmm. two decades of a console based on, like, two fail points? Sony well, didn't have you know fails what? when they... When they breach their fucking, uh, their their live their 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 live network, didn't they give away? Yep. Didn't everybody fucking get everybody's password off the fucking Sony, um, yep, network? Were, didn't everybody's yeah. passwords get stolen? That wasn't a fail on Sony. Nope, nope. No one and no one talks about you know they talk about that, the red ring, but no one talks about the yellow light. PS3 right. had a yellow light of death. And no one talks about when PS3 first came out. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say that it was a five $600 console and you can get a Xbox 360 for, you know, almost half that. No one talks about that. I mean, they'll, they'll talk about, well, PS3 had Blu-ray and Xbox 360 had HD. I was like, yeah, cool, man. And at that time, it's kind of like nowadays with, you know, TVs being 4k and stuff like that. And it's like, well, 
my Xbox 360 DVD looks just a little bit worse than your Blu-ray, you know, movie, but my DVD costed 10 bucks. Your Blu-ray just cost you $25 to get that same movie. And, you know, and you just spent $600 on basically a Blu-ray player. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's just, all, it's, uh, it's all immature. It's all pretty immature yeah. when it comes down to it. Unfortunately. Yeah, video games are supposed to be for fun. It's supposed to be a way for people to enjoy themselves, to interact with each other. And, you know, it's kind of nice. I miss the, I do miss uh, the co-op, the couch co-op. Um, some games are kind of bringing some of that back, but like uh, I remember one day my buddy came over. We I can't remember which game it was, but we both wanted to play it online and stuff like that. And I think we even just wanted to both play it together, and we couldn't. You had to sign in on two separate you know systems on the internet and stuff like that. And it was just like, really, man, like. You know, and it's just supposed to be a way for us to interact with each other and, and ourselves. And, you know, I, I use, you know, I use video games as a way to online, you know, to kind of, you know, it's kind of like how some people read books. I just want to get lost, you know, kind of get out of reality for a little bit and just, you know, save a princess, slay a dragon, score a touchdown, you know, do whatever. Just something that's not, you know, to get out of reality for a little bit. Right, you get you get out of your own head too sometimes. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, you know, life has a way of transitioning stresses and problems. When you when you when you solve one, another one pops up. Yeah. So you're always just kind of jumping from 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 one thing you're trying to fix to the next thing you're trying to get right. So it's like it's good to have that escape. Yeah, man. It's it's yeah and. Yeah, it's it is just kind of nice to have escape because, like you said, you know, it just you get something, you finally get caught up on something, and something else happens, and it's just something to kind of get your mind off mind off of it because you know that stuff like that's what really gets the people, and yeah. If you think about it, because your your whole life is staged with hurdles. I mean, first yep. you gotta first you gotta pass your, the education system. And get and get either a diploma or a degree. Then you got to get a job, and you got to keep a job, or you got to climb the ladder. Then you gotta then you gotta find a wife. You got to get married. You got to get a house. You got to afford that. If you have kids, then you got to raise them. It's all just yeah. it's all just hurdles, right? Then you, you grow, you get you get old, you might get a disease. Then you got to try to beat that, and then you just die. Yeah. So it's all yeah. just one hurdle to the next. It's like life is just a big Olympic Olympics course. Yep. And the sad part the about next. it is you, yep. And the sad part about it is you don't, you don't understand that or don't discover that till it's you're in your thirties or whatever. And then it's just like, oh crap, man, this is it's never gonna stop, is it? There's always gonna be something. And then that's kind of when being humble and the humility and stuff finally hits you. It's just like, man, it's it's never gonna, never gonna stop. There's always gonna be something. And then you just kind of then that's when sometimes. Yeah, like I said, humility and stuff hits you. It's just kind of like you just kind of – then you start sounding like that, you know, that old man or whatever that's just like, it is what it is, man. And you just kind of yeah. start dropping that off. And then it's just kind of like, wow, I, I know what that guy meant now. <laughs> I think it's kind of like – for me, it's kind of like Back to the Future resonates to me so much because it's like that Marty McFly thing when he says to Doc, yeah. he's like, this is, this is heavy, Doc. And like what yeah. you said about your thirties, it's kind of heavy. Like life gets yep. kind of heavy when you get to your mid thirties, like reality sets in and that, you know, you, you almost half your life's gone by. And I think that's yep. part of the, the retro collecting too, is because it's a yep. return to childhood, right? It's a return yep. to a simpler return time innocent. or a, <laughs> a, a childhood. It's a return to that childhood wonder that we somehow regress back to or turn to at that point in our life because it, it all gets really heavy. Like Marty McFly yep. says, you know, yeah. what the stuff, the stuff, uh, does gravity different in the future or why is everything so heavy? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly it, man. You know, call it nostalgic goggles, call it something. But like I was talking earlier, buying this box console brings me back to Kmart standing outside there, you know, playing, mom's going to take two hours it seems like grocery shop and I, I need something to do so i'm going to play this system and 
It just playing Super Mario 3 brings me back to Saturday mornings in my PJs with the bowl of cereal in front of me, just flop down in front of our old CRTV, just, you know, playing through the levels and yeah, a simpler time, you know, like you said, return, basically return to innocence, you know, back to, uh, back to everyone you're ignorant about what goes on in the world. Right. Now, what, what are some videos or some content that you haven't done yet on your channel that, that you hope to maybe, maybe, uh, try out someday or, you know, just, just, just some things you haven't done yet on your channel since it's relatively new that you'd like to do. So, um, uh, we were talking about YouTubers earlier and he's not, he, well, he actually has been doing some retro gaming stuff lately and some retro video game, uh, retro toy collecting, but LA beast has been, uh, he was a big YouTuber that I love to watch. And I actually had him sub one day to me, which was very awesome. And I sat through some of his streams and stuff, but he brought, I mean, that's where a lot of this, this spicy videos that I've recently been doing have kind of, kind of been coming from. It's just been something different. I, 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 you know, I kind of wanted to try and stand out from some of the other people. So I was like, well, you know, it'd be really funny and kind of fun to watch. Well, me eat a hot pepper or something and try and play super Mario, you know, and I'm sitting here, snots coming out, you know, I mean, sometimes it grows to some people out, but snots coming out some, uh, you know, tears in my eyes, and I'm just sitting here going, ah, 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 you know, and trying to just do a simple level in Super Mario. And so that was kind of something going on, and, you know, people enjoyed that. Like I said earlier, my friends that weren't even into gaming, my coworkers, I get called, you know, hey, spicy dude or whatever at work now, and then there's actually people that show up at my work with stuff that, hey, you should do a video with this. Hey, you should try this. And, you know, it's just like, okay, cool, and, you know, and, it's kind of weird, like, you know, having quote unquote fans and stuff like that. And so, I mean, and uh, I don't, I didn't see her tonight, but the, somebody on the, uh, in the past, one of my uh, friends on there has actually donated. I got, I don't know if you know about the one chip challenge and stuff like that. They actually donated a, a bunch of spicy stuff too for me to try. And it's just like, okay, you know, people aren't enjoying this and it's kind of fun for me. So, um, otherwise, I mean, I, I've been, my wife for our anniversary coming up, she got me, an, I finally got like an actual like gaming chair, which has been pretty cool because I had like an eighties computer chair that I couldn't even really do videos in because I just turned and it'd just be like, ee! and you just see like creaking and stuff. And right. then and I, I kind of want to, I, I've been getting a little bit more serious with actually streaming gameplay. Um, I've noticed that people actually like to like watch the live stuff a lot better than uh pre-recorded stuff so I've, I've been looking at hopefully sometime um investing in a better green screen to kind of go along with the streaming um but i growing up what i really like to do as like an after school thing when i finally got you know dsl internet so like that i was really into making kind of like uh anime music videos and i've been thinking about that recently with you know uh, I talked earlier about trying to become YouTube famous, but I'm kind of, you know, monetized or anything with that. I'm kind of just leaving away for that. But something I really liked, enjoyed to do was taking clips, editing, making music videos. And I mean, I even had an idea one night when I was laying there. It was very random. I was kind of just listening to music and uh, Hooba Stang Crawling in the Dark came on, you know. And then I was like, you know what would be cool is... uh taking some cut scenes and stuff from like Witcher three and then just playing that song and just kind of trying to make it all go together. And that growing up, I was, I was really huge into making like dragon. I was, a, I was really big in the dragon ball Z when I was a kid. And I mean, I have fanfic going on websites talking. That's all we talked about with dragon ball Z, you know, and naturally I started making like dragon ball Z music videos and stuff like that. That was pretty big when, when I was younger so I kind of want to start moving towards, you know, getting better at editing kind of because yes, it's easy to kind of record something and just upload it. But I, I find the videos that I like to watch are the ones that had the funny scenes from movies thrown in there at the right time, throwing in some editing here and there just to kind of make it not so plain Jane, you know, 
Um, yeah. That's kind of, I've been just trying to invest in a little bit better equipment because I know equipment doesn't make the videos good. It's the actual content and stuff. But trying to do that, trying to get better at just editing in general and this, you know, obviously this spiciness is, I'm enjoying that. And then probably just, you know, what works, you know, and kind of just the fun stuff, showing off pickup videos, um, game room blogs. I've noticed a lot of people like that. My first, my first really big hit video was my 2019 game room one, which actually I think almost closed in on a thousand views. And it was, and it was a surprise one where I uploaded it in the morning and it was nothing fancy. Me walking around my game room for 10 minutes talking about stuff. I uploaded it. I went to sleep. I woke up later that day to go to work and I had a hundred views in a couple hours. And I was like, holy crap. You know, what did I do here that was different than anything else? And I just found out that people just like to look at game rooms, man. I think get ideas and stuff. And I, I really like watching game room videos. And that's kind of, you know, just doing stuff more like that. Editing the game, you know, game room, doing blogs. And I know the goal is I'm trying to get down to more. Um, a lot of people have been having kind of fun watching my uh, family interacting more with the channel. My uh, boys one night played, uh, I think it was NBA Jam on Super Nintendo. When while I was doing stuff in my game room, they streamed that and they had a blast doing that. And I actually had a decent amount of people actually checking that out. So I think I'm I trying to invest, you know, or having more probably interaction with the family on the channel too. I don't know if my wife will ever do another, um, uh, see, uh, BFG actually put that in the chat that, uh, he wants to know if we'll see more of my wife on the channel. She's kind of, kind of a little timid and kind of scared to do it. I think and I was too at first, you know, my first few videos, I'm really like awkward and I'm a very shy guy in real life. So it was kind of, it was weird to do these videos, but I'm kind of coming more out of my shell and yeah, man, it's great hopes for the future. Now, before I uh, throw it over to Brady for some other chat questions that we've had from the viewers, um, okay. what's a piece of advice that you've been given could be from anybody in your life about any topic that you would think would resonate with with our viewers right now what's some what's some good advice you've been given at any point in your life that you'd like so, to share a lot of you know i get this question a lot and what it basically came down to was surprise guidance surprise uh advice i actually there's a youtuber called spruce gh um specializes in uh going to flea markets going to secondhand store um, you know, video games, GI Joe's, all that stuff. Well, he put up, a, I want to say it was a 5,000 subs, uh, giveaway and I won it. I won it and it was an NES classic. So I, I won that. And then he sent it, he sent it, you know, and he sent me a nice typed up letter and, uh, spent some time putting into it. And, you know, and he, he kind of mentioned in there something about noticing that I have a newer channel and near the end of the letter, he simply said, you know, do it until it's not fun anymore. If it's not fun anymore, just stop. And that's kind of what I've been, kind of what I've been doing. I mean, this isn't a job. This is just supposed to be, this was just supposed to be a hobby. This was just supposed to be something fun to do in my spare time, you know? And I have caught myself doing that. Hey, oh, I haven't had a video out in a couple of days. I need to, I need to do something. I need to, what can I do? What can I do? And, you know, pushing myself to, just to push out content. And you can see it. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but you can almost feel it that I don't seem like I'm enjoying it, that I'm not, you know, when I get into it, I'm not getting passionate about it. I'm just like, okay, uh, I don't edit any of it. I just put basic editing, like the subscribe button, just the stuff and I, and it's just pushed out. And there was a while there for, or for a while there, it was kind of just, like I said, when I was trying to force myself to play that game, so that's not, that's not me. That's not having fun. That's just, that's just, I got to get something out. I got to get something out. And it's just not good to watch. And I didn't even like watching it, you know. And I think it was somebody you had interviewed last week. It said, you know, trying to put out something that I myself would actually enjoy watching. Um, and that's kind of what it is, is, I mean, the biggest advice I can get for YouTubers and anything like that is, you know, unless for some reason you have, 100,000 subs or something like that and it is literally legitimately your job and even if it's not you know 
it's like your job and you want a career in life. You don't want to spend the rest of your life doing something you hate and you don't want to, you know, just don't just do it. If it's fun, keep doing it until it's not fun anymore. If it becomes, you know, forceful, not fun, stop. Just don't even do whatever's fun for you. And yeah. And don't, don't worry too much about how many subscribers you have, how many people are viewing your stuff. Cause that's been a biggest thing in the past too, has been, uh, almost wanting to quit doing YouTube because I put so much of, you know, heart and stuff that I thought into a video and it flopping people, not, you know, sharing the same thing with it. And then that, and it's, and it kind of breaks your heart a little bit, but you know, just kind of having that not giving up attitude too. And then, you know, and it, like I said, it's just supposed to be fun. Absolutely. Fun first. Or it's not worth it anymore. So yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to Brady now, and we're gonna see uh, if we had any chat questions from the viewers. So Brady, take it over, sir. All right. Yeah. We uh we only really had one question from uh, Ms. Ashley. Okay. Uh, she she wanted to know uh, what toy lines you had as he or when you were growing up. What toys did I collect? Yeah, when you were a kid, so... what what toys did you play with the most? As as a very little kid, uh, big thing was uh, Ninja Turtles. Um, nice. One of my first uh, things that I ever bought, I talked about this with someone, one of the first things I ever bought with my birthday money and stuff like that was uh, Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. And, and watched it all the time. And it was just, you know, I bought that. And then so obviously the next thing was like, I got to get toys. So I would buy toys, you know, and everything like that. And so growing up, Turtles was a huge thing. And just from then on, I kind of just followed out the martial arts stuff. And then when I got a little bit older, like I said, I got really into Dragon Ball Z. Nice. Awesome. Well, yeah. Zach, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for taking oh. the time to call us up. Oh, um, no, thank you guys. This was great. I, I love doing stuff like this, you know, and I was, I was telling my wife about this. I love doing, you know, interacting more with channels and, and I, and I've been watching, you know, like I was, I was amazed that I, I didn't discover this channel until, you know, I think it was, uh, you guys were, you know, popping in on, God, I want to say Mega Dan streams and stuff like that. And then I kind of met you guys through there, but yeah, this is really cool. I, I really love what you guys are doing and, you know, Get, and not only are you getting some of these awesome YouTubers, my fellow YouTubers out, getting them more exposure, but you're also like, just, this is great. Just great to be able to talk, you know, video games and everything. And it's just awesome what you guys do here. And I really appreciate it. I really like watching everything you guys do. Thank Even you, when Zach. I think it was a retro, retro Brady's on at what, six o'clock in the morning, still playing Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> been our jam lately. I, that's been our jam. Yeah. And we, uh, I, I stay up all night at work know, and I get um, off at seven in the morning and he's still playing. <laughs> yeah. And if you didn't know, we're in separate states too, which is funny. He's in PA. I'm in Florida. Oh, wow. I did, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and to let you know how it's going to work, uh, in two to three days, I'll have this, this, uh, interview uploaded and edited in full and I'll have okay. your link in the description. And I'll I'll send you uh, an active link once once that's uploaded. Okay, cool. Definitely, that's awesome. I'm sure, my uh, I don't know if my wife actually she was going to sit in and watch this, but you got the I can, I'm down here in the basement. I can hear my two two year old running around like crazy up there. So it's probably didn't get much time to watch it, but yeah, that'll be good a good thing. Then I can show my buddies and everything too. And we didn't make it tonight. I see uh, I see BFGs in here and Haytham Gruxton's in here and. That's pretty cool. Definitely, man. Well, listen, enjoy the rest of your night, and uh, take care, and I'll, and I'll send you that link as soon as it's uploaded. Sounds great. Thank you, guys. Have yourself a great night and a weekend. Thank you, man. You too, Zach. Take care, man. Yeah. Yep. Bye. Bye.